there is systemic racism in Canada, and it means that Indigenous people, black Canadians and racialized Canadians are uh, far more likely to suffer uh, violence at the hands of the authorities and police uh, than non-racialized Canadians. Uh, this is a problem uh, that we have seen for many years. And I think that once we start to recognize the beast that we're dealing with, it's from there that we're able to have broader conversations about what we're going to be able to do to stand together and confront it. We recently had our own school board here that did a review of that program and they went and actually talked to black and indigenous students and found out that they were actually feeling uh, really uncomfortable with having police in the school because they feel criminalized, right? So they actually entered the program, but that's another direct impact on our students. That Systemic racism is blindness. It's an affliction that blinds people to the existence of racism. And it's, and to be systemic, it happens not just individually, but throughout the system. So in some cases you will have policemen, security guards, doctors, judges, Crown Council, attorneys general, and maybe sometimes even ministers and prime ministers who are all involved in an event and they don't even recognize that it is systemic racism. Okay, so systemic means, uh, so in systems, right? So in uh, the education system, in the justice system, in the, um, the healthcare system, right? And the thing about systemic discrimination is that it is the, the, the system is designed, well, designed, the, the, the effect of the system is to benefit certain groups over others. So the way systemic racism itself manifests itself is through institutional, structural, and individual actions. So there are different layers of how racism manifests itself in Canada and in our society overall. So it's, it affects us in every institution, whether we're talking about healthcare, education, the legal system, and even through uh, entrepreneurship and business. Um, it's rooted within our society and within our culture. Um, the only difference is that in Canada, uh, we tend to see more of a systemic um, re reflection of racism versus individual, uh, where people are not directly expressing their feeling around discrimination. Um, but um, these, uh, these sentiments and those biases are seen and shown through different, um, you know, um, um, opportunities that are, that are not really given to certain communities, for example. Uh, when you go to uh, corporations and even in uh, establishments that are providing um, employment opportunity, you'll see a disparity between the people that are at the decision-making table versus the people that are actually doing the frontline work. So that's one way that we see the disparity. Um, although, to based on the stats, based on the stats, we see that the black community has a higher, or maybe a just as high of a education level uh, as any other population, but the employment rate is much lower than anyone else. In 1960, black diplomats at the United Nations actually shamed Canada into changing its immigration laws as a result of which the immigration facilities and procedures were opened up. A few years before that, there was another opening when after the war, Canada needed uh, domestic workers to come to work in Canadian homes so that Canadian wives could go out into the workplace and work. And we got black and colored uh, domestic workers from the West Indies and from 
the Philippines eventually, especially, um, to come and do that work. Who exactly is benefiting from systemic anti-Black racism? It's definitely not me spending my time right now speaking about it. It's definitely not the six-year-old child in Peel region who was put in handcuffs, literally hogtied in 2016 by the school resource officer. Wrists, legs, handcuffed together. Six years old. If that isn't anti-Black racism in action, if that does not speak to the to the violence that's ascribed to black folks, that a six-year-old, 40-pound-year-old girl can be handcuffed and considered a danger, I'm really not sure that uh, anyone denying that is ready to have a real conversation of how we're going to move past anti-black racism and is definitely not ready for the long, long journey ahead of us towards a racial reality in which all can actually have equal opportunity to, to participate in society to take place in this social contract that we agreed to in the ways that we interact with one another. We agreed that we are in relationship with one another built on a system of values and principles. And it's a really scary moment when certain folks in society are not able to access those same privileges. In terms of the way this impacts people, so let me give you a really concrete example, right? So, for example, I myself faced discrimination at where I worked, okay? And it was, um, in fact, at one point, they, they, it got so bad that I was, a, I was banned from the, my very workplace. Now, and it was, a big, it was a big organization. Now, in order for that to happen, right, in order for me or anybody to be banned or for anything bad to happen, a lot of people have to sign on to that, right? right? And again, these people may not think they're racist or feel racist or whatever, but that, that doesn't matter. The fact is that they, the reason they support it is because if they don't, support it, they, then put the, they put their own privilege at risk, right? So if somebody, let's say in that example of me being, what happened to me, right? So if somebody along the way, a, you know, kind of a you know, document came across their desk saying, hey, this guy's being banned from the building, and they're like, that doesn't seem right, I should speak up. They'd be putting themselves at risk, right? And the, the system, right, uh, again, punishes or rewards people for supporting it and punishes people for, 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 for not supporting it, right? You have the chance Media is a huge tool. And when, when I talk about media, it can be CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Network that's publicly owned. It can be CTV, which is privately owned. Global News, privately owned. Toronto Star, privately owned. They're able to put things within the broader social consciousness. They're able to, to put things within the broader social narrative. They can have huge impacts. One thing that we should also be talking about now is social media. You don't have to be a millionaire who owns a media company to be able to shape the ways that society is able to build and mold and, and, and create itself. That is the space that so many black folks, so many, so many people who aren't, who aren't millionaires have been able to take the conversation from what happened, in, which was a murder in 2020 and keep that and keep reminding folks that like that is not an isolated incident but rather is a manifestation of broader systems of anti-black racism that continue to be reproduced within our within our society right, the power of of the media right is to use the media to expose that hypocrisy right, to basically show you know what? They're not really following their own policies, right? So that's why it's the you know, the, the, the you know activist groups like the, the, the group of which I'm a part, right? We run campaigns to expose the that let's say like the um, you know a large organization, let's say like the federal public service, isn't actually following the policy of the government, which says you know you got to treat people equitably and not discriminate against them, right? We we, we expose right. So this is uh, and using the media for that is is key. Um, it's a two-pronged approach, right? So one is using the, 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 the media ourselves to actually kind of combat the, 
the, the, the organizations and show their hypocrisy, and the other is to help to to get the message out to young activists and, and, and help train them and connect connect with them and train them on 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 exactly how the system works and what they can do to take it down. I've been doing this work for over maybe 15 years now. And um, whenever you would uh, you know, organize an event that was either multicultural or putting an event for black history to celebrate uh, black excellence, um, other individuals, other communities did not feel like those kind of celebration uh, were, were a, a, a place, a space for them to also participate in. Um, but And also having the conversation around the, the, the experience of blacks in Canada was also a conversation and that other um, communities didn't think that they needed to participate in. And what I've observed in the past few, even couple of years, is that we're now realizing that we must address it, that silence is violence. If we do not talk about the way black people are navigating through this world, how the way they are being denied, denied certain opportunities in all institutions and in all areas of our economy, um, we're not able to actually address the gap. So the fact that we're able to use the media to not only give a voice to the black community and indigenous community to share their stories, to expose the experience that they live every day, um, to also provide um, a, an opportunity for, for white allies to, to get the, to learn and be educated about these issues and have the tool and learn to have the tool to, to, to work together with the indigenous and the black community in order to dismantle the system and to also to, to, to create a solution. Uh, to me, the media has a powerful, powerful input in, 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 in that process. Um, so continuing showing positive images of black people in the media, continuing to tell uh, black stories and different aspect of life, not just when we're only talking about either um, poverty or criminal activities. We have to really showcase the black, um, the black experience in all its facets, and uh, and and it's all its glory as well. Um, so images are very powerful. Being able to have role models that are really representing different aspect of our economy, different leadership. Um, positions as well is also a powerful way to to normalize not only um, you know the, the the contribution of blacks and this in this country and in society but also to be able to to show an example to our children the next generation that the culture of, of the black community is not just one-sided so to me the media is one of the most powerful tool in order to to do that <laughs>